Fredo? Here. Council Member Moore? Here. Council Member Quinn? Here. Deputy Mayor Henderson? Here. Mayor Campbell? Here. run that'll be held on March 22nd 2015 and the second event is the endless stand-up paddle boat race which will be held on June 15th 2015 and lastly the wedding to be held on November 29th on Fifth Avenue Beach excuse me in the wedding will they have fur coats on? <laughs> I hope so I had I think, but I think I called more. I asked you my questions about the cutoff board event, didn't I already? Okay, I, he answered my questions. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I told you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The, uh, the next item on the agenda is a presentation by. Presentation by Don Samet uh, for a long way to change to um, our city's redevelopment plan. Don? And uh, Mayor Council, before uh, Mr. Samet comes forward, uh, as some of you may know, I have a conflict of interest with regard to this particular matter, so I'm going to be recusing myself. Here this evening is Jennifer Perdidio from the firm of McManaman Scotland, your redevelopment council, and she'll be able to provide any legal advice to you with regard to this matter. Thank you. By, by way of introduction, um, the state of New Jersey has recently uh, revised its uh, liquor license laws related to uh, microbreweries and uh, craft distilleries. And because of this, we've seen a, a great deal of interest in um, people wishing to open up those types of businesses within the city of Asbury Park. At your October 15th meeting, I presented to you uh, an interest in someone opening a craft distillery uh, in our central business district, uh, which the planning board uh, just looked at this past Monday and will be referring their report back to you. But for today, um, there is interest uh, and a specific request to amend the Main Street <coughs> Redevelopment Plan to allow for a microbrewery um, to have frontage on Main Street, uh, which is currently not uh, permitted. So um, with that by way of introduction, I'd like to uh, introduce um, Kevin Kennedy, who is the attorney for the applicant, and he can describe uh, exactly what uh, his client is proposing. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor and ladies and gentlemen of the council. My name is Kevin Kennedy. I'm an attorney with an office in Red Bank. I'm very happy uh, to be here tonight. Uh, I appreciate you uh, putting us on, on the agenda. I periodically ap appear before some of the uh, city's land use boards, but I don't think I've had the opportunity or the privilege to officially appear uh, before this body, so it's uh, nice to officially meet you in that capacity. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, as, as Mr. Samet just indicated, we are here. Uh, my clients would like to open and operate a microbrewery. And though we comply with the zone requirements and we comply with the uh, Main Street Redevelopment Plan requirements, uh, overwhelmingly, there is a, a, a technical uh, glitch. And in a nutshell, uh, we are looking to res respectfully requesting that the City Council tweak uh, in a site-specific fashion the Main Street Redevelopment Plan. And I'll get into that in a little bit. And, and the uh, tweak, I guess, is the, my not-so-fancy way of saying an amendment to, to the Main Street re Redevelopment Plan. And Mayor, with, with your consent, what I'd like to do is just spend three or four minutes uh, explaining who my clients are and what the type of operation is that they're proposing, just so you have an idea. And then I would like to spend another uh, three or four minutes about 
what the redevelopment plan provides, how we comply, how we, you know, what the what the technical uh, issue is, and and what the nature of the proposed amendment is. So, with that having been said, uh, again, uh, my client is Dark City Brewing Company LLC, and with me in the back, I have uh, some of the principals, Kevin Sharp, Sal Malilio, and and John Palmieri. Uh, they're very excited, and it makes me very excited because my clients are so excited to be here. My clients have executed a lease, and it's to rent approximately 3,000 square feet of the property. It's at 801-803 Second Avenue slash 1001 Main Street. And for the record, it's block 2702, lot 7. Uh, you're all familiar with the property. It's physically located on the uh, corner of Main Street and Second Avenue, and it was a site that was previously occupied by uh, Thrip Thrifty Treasures. It's immediately adjacent to uh, the Asbury Park uh, Roastery Coffee Shop. So right now there's a one-story commercial building at the site, and the property is in the commercial shopping zone, and it's in the Main Street redevelopment area. And basically, as I indicated, what we're looking to do is to operate a microbrewery at the site, uh, a facility which will conditionally allow for the production and consumption of craft beer. And the brewed beer will also be distributed from the premises to, to area restaurants and, and bars if, if uh, this is a go. In uh, real general terms, and you've seen some of the, the floor plans in, in your um, agenda packages, there's a production area and a tasting room, and uh, there are going to be about 15 tables in the area, in, in the facility. And what it is is uh, our, uh, patrons would come in and uh, in conjunction with the tour of the facility, they could have a, some limited uh, on-site uh, con consumption, and uh, it'll be brewed on-site. And basically, that's the nature of, of one aspect of it. The other aspect is, is the, uh, if uh, things go our way, we will uh, you know, distribute beer to some of the local restaurants and bars for, 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 for distribution and, and for, for them to sell. Uh, basically, just some of the details, just to give you real, some real basic details, uh, the hours, and again, this is just an approximate because we're still starting the new business, and this would just be an approximate hours for the public access um, uh, for the tasting and the tours. That would be basically uh, Thursdays and Fridays from 5 o'clock uh, in the afternoon to 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, and on Saturdays and Sundays from noon to 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. Again, those are just um, anticipated hours of operation. And just for full disclosure purposes, that doesn't mean that it's not open at other times. At other times, it will be brewing, but those are the anticipated hours of when the public would be able to come in and, and do it a, a taste and a tour. And, and the concept is that, uh, that patrons will come in, take a tour of the facility, uh, fall in love with the, 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 the beer, and uh, buy it and ask to buy it when they're out at the area restaurants. Um, let's see. What other uh, things would, would you uh, want to know? Deliveries. We do not have any type of tractor trailer deliveries or anything like that. Uh, the limited deliveries we get would be from an average uh, van, box truck, your typical UPS, Federal Express type of uh, uh, truck. And um, uh, I guess it's important to say, because it is a, a changing industry, we are not a bar, we are not a restaurant. Um, we are uh, not not a brew pub. Uh, there's you know so it's nothing like that. And in terms of employees, we anticipate having three employees at the site at a time, and that would be basically a head brewer and two brewer operators. And I think you heard a little bit about this as as Mr. Samuel was just indicating at your October meeting um, that. In conjunction with this, the type of liquor license we need is a Class A limited brewery license. And that's something special and something unique. It's not your typical uh, license that uh, typically comes before for this institution. And in a nutshell, some of the aspects of that uh, license, uh, and they are referenced in Mr. Samet's uh, memorandum, it provides for a sale of limited amount of beer for off-site consumption and a limited on-site consumption in conjunction with a tour of, of, the, of the brewery. And um, I guess importantly, uh, and I'm sorry, and, and this is a new regulation, there's a federal license and a state license involved, 
And there are requirements. You can't have food. It cannot be a restaurant. So when I said it would not be a bar, not be a restaurant, that is not just our preference. That is the licensing requirements. And as I was indicating, this is permitted under uh, the commercial shopping zone regulations and the Main Street redevelopment plan with a little bit of a, of a hitch. Because um, the technically, this constitutes a light industrial or manufacturing use. And while it is permitted, there's a provision in the redevelopment plan that says that that light industrial or manufacturing aspect can't front on Main Street. And so part of our facility, as we're proposing, will front on Main Street. And that's what creates this, uh, this issue that we have while we're coming before you tonight. And although the applicants uh, could uh, theoretically redesign the interior layout of this microbrewery so as to avoid this conflict that I'm talking about with the plan, it's believed that it would materially compromise the overall effectiveness and appeal of the operation. And, and just for, for, the, for the record and full disclosure, when I heard this, I said to my clients, look, it's a big production. Uh, you know, I know you're in a hurry, I know you're sensitive. Why don't you just do it? And forget about coming to an, uh, applying for an amendment. Forget about uh, having the council convince the council and then have it forwarded to the planning board. Why don't you just you know, make the interior uh, modifications that you can to eliminate that? And the client said, well, you know, that, that is possible, but we really don't want to do it because we don't think that's the best way to do it. We don't think that's the right way to do it. And, and what they've said is um, the loss of frontage on Main Street would, would materially limit and reduce the size of the microbrewery, particularly the tasting room. And, Creating and starting any business is, is always uh, a challenge, so they didn't want to be sort of hamstrung right, right to begin with. And it also, um, they thought that, uh, you know, the, the, the way to address that issue would be to put up a, a dummy wall uh, so that it wouldn't front on Main Street. And we basically created two separate uses, and, and my clients thought, well, that's really not you know, such a great idea, and it would be two smaller spaces, and it's not really advantageous to my clients or for to the city. And they basically said, first, that such a, uh, a separation would materially decrease the size of the microbrewery, and would also, uh, and this is important, it would lose access to, to the windows that currently have frontage on, on Main Street. And I guess the former uh, uh, thrifty treasurers use those windows to their, their advantage. And it would also, um, having those windows would obviously provide our existing space um, you know, access that to a lot of, you know, south, southeast wind exposure and sunlight, and would also give the place a, a fresh and uh, airy feeling, which would just be overall uh, condu uh, conducive to, to the city. And my clients were really very, very, very sensitive about that, and very um, much fo focused on that because they thought that was a really important part. And you know, shame on me, I, I learned a lesson that, you know, hey, you know, don't always take the easier route because uh, if, if in the end uh, they didn't, my clients did not want to sacrifice ease for um, the, the, the overall effectiveness and, and appeal of, of the proposal. So that's the nature of, of the operation. And in terms of um, the redevelopment plan that we're looking for, we're looking for that site-specific amendment to allow this aspect to front to front on on Main Street, and I won't repeat all the reasons. But uh, in my memo, which I think was attached to your in your package, there were a lot of sound reasons, and including the operation of the microbrewery will uh, likely spur much other needed re redevelopment in the Main Street area. And I also step back for a moment. I want to uh, because it would be remiss if I did not say this. One of my clients overwhelming overwhelming uh, desires is to, to be in Asbury Park, but to also to be in this Main Street area. And, and I probably haven't said that enough. I should have been the first thing I said, but I think that is, that is uh, an important overriding element. And we also think that the operation of the microbrewery at the site will likely serve as a catalyst for other future, future redevelopment in the area. And it's also going to serve as a, a, you know, what we hope will be a destination point for tourists, shoppers, and city residents alike. Uh, increasing foot traffic in the area, which is one of the main, at least uh, from my review, one of the main uh, tenants of the Main Street Redevelopment Plan. We think it will boost the city's tourism and, and also 
the light industrial aspect of this microbrewery operation will physically be located away from Main Street, um, which would be in furtherance of the apparent spirit and intent of the existing Main Street redevelopment plan. And um, the Main Street redevelopment plan in its, in its uh, text establishes a number of goals and objectives, including to encourage uses along Main Street which attract pedestrian activity. We think we would uh, facilitate that. Uh, another goal and objective is to encourage uses along Main Street which implement physical improvements and uh, improve the aesthetic appearance of properties. So, um, and then in closing, we also think that a microbrewery at the site will have a beneficial and complementary relationship with other local restaurants, bars, and businesses. I um, used the word complementary, and I think uh, Mr. Samet used a much better word. I think he referred to it as a symbiotic relationship, which means what's good for us is hopefully going to be good for the bars and restaurants who will hopefully be uh, distributing our, our, our craft beer. So for all those reasons, um, we are respectfully requesting that, that the city uh, amend the site-specific, in a site-specific fashion, the Main Street Redevelopment Plan to allow this operation to occur. We don't come here lightly. Uh, we know uh, opera, uh, modifying a redevelopment plan would not be our first option, but for all the reasons I said, the clients felt it was worth it uh, for the betterment of the project, for the betterment of the city, and, and that's why we, we come here. I, I would just go down so, the road. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't have, so it, it allows for like industrial industry, so I don't have a problem with that, but the one thing that Don mentioned was um, with the fermentation fermentation tanks that there there could be an odor. Um, so I would assume your clients are going to ensure that that odor doesn't affect Alley from Asbury Roastery or any surrounding businesses. Absolutely right? yes. That's it. <laughs> I was just going to say uh, a brewery next to my favorite coffee place is heaven. <laughs> I don't know what else I could ask for. Um, I agree 100%. We need to start building up Main Street. We have a big void at one end, on each end of Main Street, that needs to be developed. We've been concentrating on Cookman Avenue and Waterfront for a very long time, and we've gotten things going on Springwood, so I think this is... And also, I have to say that my favorite uh, organic grocery store, <coughs> Seed to Sprout, um, is also going to be there. So I think we're seeing, starting to see that movement, and I think the uh, microbrewery would be a nice addition. Okay, that, is that answer? That's it. Shall I? Go, Go ahead. Um, the door faces Second Avenue, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And it's going to stay there? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, you're, um, you talked about deliveries. Will you be having, will you own a panel truck that will be parked there? Do you make deliveries yourselves? Or? I would defer this to Kevin, if, if you don't mind. <coughs> Okay, so I know that there's a loading zone there, but you'll need to park that on the street, I gather. No, it's going to be parked at my house. It's going to be parked at your house? Yes. Okay. Um, well, during the day. You'll just use it for, for yeah, pickup day? It will be probably once a week. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask about was how much waste product do you produce? Um, in regards to like, solid waste? Yeah. I mean, what? Very minimal. There's going to be about 500 to 600 pounds Oh, okay, very good. Thank you. Oh, wait, I do, if you don't mind, um, I have been at the city for over three years on parking and 2nd Avenue and that large sidewalk we have that should be cut in half and better parking arranged for all of the businesses that are there. So hopefully this will spur Joe on to, because we even measured. I went out with Robert and him and measured. And I really would like... You know, I think it's going to be longer than I'm going to be here. I really would like to push to get that done for all of the businesses that are there. It's going to make a difference. And I am just very pleased that we're looking at a different part of the city and we're trying to build up at this point not only the oceanfront and Cookman Avenue, but also this corridor as we expand into other corridors. And so I'm very happy about it. 
No questions of Mr. Kennedy. Thank you. So, and my recommendation is that you um, adopt the resolution that's on your work session agenda tonight, which would forward this amendment to the planning board for their review and comments, and then they'd be able to uh, give us a back to you as required by session. From there, you can search for the Thank you. I, 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 okay. Mr. Kennedy, I have no question to you, but Mr. Samet, I have questions for you. Okay. Okay. Not about your project. Your project's fine. Three weeks ago, you had us open up the CBD amendment. Tonight, you're having us open up Main Street development for an amendment. Why can we not open up the waterfront development area for an amendment? Why can that not be done? Why cannot the bowling alley be made whole? Why can't a temporary parking area be made whole. What, what is the difference? They're all redevelopment zones. You have a, you can't forget about your redeveloper agreement with Asbury Partners, which requires collaboration. And I, I believe the word consent is, is used. If they, so if they agree, we can. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's the amendments we've been discussing with them now for quite some time. I think you're asking about a zoning issue, which is different than an amendment, right? You're asking about why can't the bowling alley serve, why can't Pat Fasano serve his booze and food outside, which has been the problem through right. the summer. So if we're amending the downtown for a gin distillery, and, and we're amending Main Street, although the amendment for Main Street's kind of different, we're just saying can we front can the light industry front Main Street? We allow light industry on Main Street anyway, but with the with the with the liquor license or the or the serving the alcohol and the booze outside, that's more of a z zoning is saying no to that. No, it's an, it's, it would be no. zoning is saying no because it's inconsistent with the redevelopment plan. So right. So why can't we open up the waterfront redevelopment plan and amend that? Well, he could make an application, couldn't he? You could, I mean, but it's still so the same as, you know, you need the uh, consent of ISTAR in right. order to do so. Okay. So that's possible. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> from the City Council. John? Yeah. Um. Thank you. <coughs> Just one quick thing, an item of information which we talked about. Uh, we're we're going to ask the City Manager to start doing some RFPs for the new Council to look at for some of the professionals. So everybody who's in agreement that we can do that, no problem. Uh, have we started collecting any court fees? And if you don't have that information tonight, I should have called you. So if you give me that information in the future, because that could be if we started collecting some fees, we could anticipate that times 12 towards next year's budget, I would hope. Uh, short, sweet question. I know you guys are meeting, I think, next Tuesday at 8.15. I can't make it. Are we ready for winter and snow? And ice and cold. And are we doing anything different than we did last year? Uh, well, we are meeting. We are meeting at eight fifteen in next week. But I have been advised by um, our city engineer and our superintendent of public works that our salt shed is full. That we have a contract that is current <laughs> with a salt purveyor. That um, all of the plows are operable on all of our trucks. That pickup trucks that normally did not have plows have, over the summer season, have been equipped with with plows. Um, so, um, barring um, that we don't get three feet of snow at one, any one time, uh, we we are prepared. And I'll ask it now, but uh, I'll email it also. When you have your meeting, just ask them if they mounted that 200-gallon tank of the liquid calcium chloride on the pickup truck so we could hit the streets that don't get sun. That would be a big thing. Uh, Springwood Avenue started becoming another parking lot for dinosaur DPW trucks. It just looks terrible. We have a New Jersey gas truck there that should be junked. 
we have a beach tech that's been sitting outside of the weather for three years. It's got to be junked. Our beach tech broke down this year. We didn't use that as a backup. We borrowed Bradley Beaches. So it's just a junkyard that doesn't open on the west side. We have old truck four there, which put this on your snow question. It's a truck with a plow on it with a $10,000 stainless steel saucer on the back that hasn't been used in three years. Is that going to be operable, operable this winter? If not, let's take off the stainless steel body and use it on another truck. You have a yellow truck there that's plowed up, and you have the Henderson truck that's plowed up. So is that becoming DPW West? Uh, personnel, city personnel, and hiring practices. Uh, we, we've applied for three openings at DPW that have not been filled. The request went in January 15th of 2013. The request expires January 15th, 2014. These positions have not been filled, and this money is in the budget. So this. These positions either aren't necessary or we're not hiring them for some reason. These are positions that, to me, could go to Asbury Park residents. So if you could look into that before the timeline expires, I appreciate it. Do we have a contract with SpectraServe yet, since that was brought up in the June audit, that we don't have a contract and we're in violation of the law? SpectraServe being the company that's charging us $400,000 a year to take away the slugs and we don't have a contract with them yeah, from the sewer plant? We are um, in the process of putting out a bid for trucking. We have pricing from Pacific Valley Sewage Commission, who coincidentally just called today, confirming that uh, they will hold their, their price. So um, we are just going to be trucking the sludge to Pacific Valley Sewage at a much lower rate than we're being charged now. So we will not be renewing the contract for SpectraServe or for any um, sludge disposal company. We're only going to be um, purchasing the trucking and the sludge will be dumped up <coughs> for Sacred Valley Sewage. Okay. Thank you. That's why I thank you. Uh, first of all, I, I, I regretfully could not attend Veterans Day. I'm sure the ceremony was excellent. Um, we did not have off school. I don't quite ever understand that, uh, but we did not, um, and we celebrated in our own way. But thank you for all those who served. I didn't get to say that. Um, also, congratulations to those who won the election. I wish you luck. Um, you have a lot to learn. Uh, congratulations, and I'm confident that you will continue to move Asbury forward. And also, my thoughts and prayers go out to the Ron Conley family. Um, Ron was a, um, a co-worker of mine a friend of mine, and he served the city of Asbury Park for 50 years as a lifeguard, and uh, he just passed away. That's it. John? Um, just real quick, Jack, I, 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 we talked about the recycling. Don't want to see a repeat of what happened in the last two weeks. Matter of fact, I was actually stopped on the boardwalk from the business owner asking me what happened because all their stuff was out and it wasn't picked up. Um, also, congratulations that everybody won the election. All the best. Um, on this date, 1864, Sherman started his march back to Atlanta. Do you know why? I, Atlanta was burning. <laughs> Sherman couldn't be stopped. So you know what they named after him? Sherman Tank. A tank. There you go. Finally. <laughs> Don't you people watch the History Channel? <laughs> Thank you, that's all. Who does? <laughs> Amy? Uh, obviously, I want to give a huge thank you to um, Sue and John for the work that they've done in Asbury Park and, and the redevelopment that's occurred. Uh, a couple of little things, just going back to John with the snow removal, because I will be at the meeting. So one of the things we want to work on, right, is how we're communicating to residents in terms of snow removal, the roads that are being you know, priority roads that will absolutely be cleared if we have any repeat of last year where there was, you know, well over a foot of snow several times. And then strongly encouraging people who have driveways to put their car on their driveway. And then I was hoping to get a proposal, um, whether it's implementable or not, we can, we can talk about, about possible alternate side of the street parking for snow days. Um, so those would be three things that if we could, if we could have Joe and Robert kind of give some thought to and then assess and then talk talk about them next week. 
Um, the boards, which was Pam's uh, suggestion two meetings ago, which I couldn't agree more. Every Since so many of the boards are wiped clean, I would ask that a letter be sent to the current board members with an application and a deadline for them to respond if they want to continue serving on those boards. So January 1, we're not scrambling to put boards together and potentially delaying projects. Very good. Okay, and then the last thing, which is probably a little more Don than you, but Jack, you and I have talked about it as well, the process of looking at, at our redevelopment zones, and in particular the CBD, and de-designating it as an area in need of redevelopment, so developers aren't coming in and thinking that they're automatically getting pilots. Um, so if we could have some sort of like memo on how that process begins and how we move it forward if, and then eventually I, I would imagine a vote on if that's something that we're interested in doing certainly in the CBD. And is that thick, hold on. I have a thick packet. That's it. I would like to also congratulate all those individuals that were re-elected and won a seat to serve city council. There's a learning curve. There's a lot going on in the city. And many of you may not realize, but it is grueling to run a campaign. And I, I know that the people that were elected will not only continue to do a good job, but those new people on board will give all that they can. And I know four of those individuals are here tonight. But um, congratulations to those of you that won. I'd like to mention also yesterday, Veterans Day, unfortunately, I was not able to attend. However, I heard in one of the radio, one of the radio announcements yesterday that once someone has gone off to war, when they come back, they'll never be the same. And what we may think, for some of us, that they are as they were previously, the experience has left a mark. And so my hats go off to all the veterans and those of you that have families that have vet veterans. <clears throat> the last thing that I want to mention, and unfortunately was not able to be videotaped, but there was a gentrification workshop October, uh, October the 30th. And there were two different viewpoints by those presenting at this workshop. And to me, the good thing about this workshop, oftentimes the word gentrification is a scary word, and this absolutely was far from that. And I think one of the things that those people that attended walked away from was knowing there's a humanistic side of gentrification, but in addition to that, when you have developers, developers are here to make a money. It's a business. And so if somehow we could merge those together, we would be in good shape because there's going to be a lot of redevelopment going on in the city. And that's it for me. Thank you. Matters from the city manager. Uh, city Council, I have one item which I included in your packet. Uh, it was prepared by the finance department. I reviewed it with Ricky Gartz. It is a worksheet for uh, our best practices um, and um, based on our score, the state will not be reducing any of our um, aid. Um, it is, again, just uh, submitted as um, information that you may want to, uh, to take a look at uh, at, your, at your leisure. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, either now or sometime in the future. Matters from the city attorney. Uh, yes, Mayor and Council, I just uh, would like to let the public know that the uh, Council may be taking action on only one item this evening that was addressed earlier during our executive session, and that is an item that's already listed on the regular session agenda as item Q under the resolutions, and it's a resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Asbury Park authorizing an HMFA agreement for payment in lieu of taxes for the proposed housing project known as Renaissance, it was formerly known as Renaissance Village, but is now known as Renaissance on Springwood Avenue. I would also like to indicate that item P, just prior to that under resolutions, 
um, which was a resolution accepting and approving long-term tax exemption application submitted by AP at South Grand Urban Renewal will not be acted upon this evening, nor will the second ordinance for first reading listed as item lowercase letter B, which also deals with the South Grand <coughs> Urban Renewal Project. And that's it. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll take a five-minute recess. Let's see, 10 minutes.